Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Larry and this is Your Own Adventure. In today's video, we'll be talking about this frame bag for mountain bikes and road bikes if you're that sicko that likes to ride on the road as well. So if you want to learn more about it and see how it works on the bikes, then uh, just keep on watching. So just before the video starts, I want to say thank you to everyone who has subscribed and been watching the videos recently. I'm going to do a thing where at the end of the videos from now on or when I can, I'll do a small update on, on what I have going on behind the scenes like this budget hardtail frame. But if you want to see some more behind the scenes stuff, uh, at the end of the video I'll do a small update and I'll continue doing that at the end of my videos just because I have so much stuff going on and I can't always do a video on them. It's easier for me to just do a vlog style video on the updates. So let's get back into this thing and uh, thanks for watching. I just want to talk a little bit about this, this frame bag because I have a stump jumper and it's hard to find something that fits in the frame because where the head tube meets the, the top tube, there's not much room for a bag to go into the, the frame, uh, in between the frame and the down tube and the top tube. So this is the only thing that I could really find that is small and inconspicuous on the bike. Let me know what you think about what it looks like on the bike. I really don't like having anything on the top of the of the frame. That's why I decided to put it within the the cavity of the frame, as you might consider it's below the top tube and uh, above the the down tube or the yeah the down tube. And this thing doesn't carry a ton, but it does the job for what I need it to do. I am a little bit bummed that it doesn't fit my phone. I have a Galaxy Note 8 and it's just a little bit too wide. This thing is about three inches. I'm looking at this little measuring mat here and it's just a little bit too wide to go into this uh, bag. But I do have another phone somewhere that I, I'll show you in the video. Oh, <laughs> it's in here. Uh, this is just like a, a burner phone and it's uh, about two and a half inches so as long as you have a smaller phone you should be good to fit it in this bag and that's a whole different topic I think that maybe riding the trail without a cell phone is probably not the best idea so if you can't bring if you don't want to bring your expensive phone then maybe have a burner phone as a backup and just throw it in your in your frame bag but yeah that's the one downfall that I see currently with this but it's still better than wearing a fanny pack out there. I just, I don't know, I just don't like wearing anything and I don't, I don't like the time it takes to put the, the fanny pack into the loops of my pants because I like to wear it that way. I know you could just put them, they're supposed to be just hip packs, but I still don't like the way that they move um, as hip packs. But this small frame bag could fit a lot of stuff. I have all my goodies in here and you could probably uh, even add a a tube and a um, CO2 cartridge in here and you wouldn't have an issue if that's the way you want to go. I, I added snacks and more um, I guess privileged items. I have my wallet and AirPods and whatnot but you could just go straight to the um, hardware side of things and put a nicer multi-tool than this one. But the, the bag itself is, it's really lightweight and it has a nice material to it. It seems like it'll hold up pretty well. Um, the zipper pull is, it's not the best, but it, it seems, you know, it seems like it's gonna do the job as much as any other frame bag on the market. Like, that's the thing with these things. I got this on Amazon and say what you will about um, ordering this sort of stuff um, with bigger name brands. I think um, Niner might make frame bags. Some A brand like that, oh, Salsa, I think makes frame bags. And it's all the same stuff. Um, 
it's gonna last as long as you take care of this thing and don't beat it to death. But this one feels good enough and it, it stays on the bike really well. I did a, a loop at the local trail with it and I didn't really notice too much of a difference and it, didn't, it definitely didn't shake around, but I actually did notice whenever I was doing wheelies that it was a little bit harder to, to do the wheelies because the weight of this with all the snacks and whatnot in it um, weighed down the front wheel just a little bit more. And that might be psychological, but I really I do think that it changed the balance point of the bike a little bit. So just be aware of that if you're going to be riding and doing jumps, and that's something that you want. Um, and almost every ride that I go on, I, I want a lot of stuff. So um, I like to have snacks, and if I do a ride without a snack, I always feel terrible afterwards. So this might just end up being on the bike all the time, and that's okay. I just have to adjust the balance point and understanding a little bit more about the the way the bike feels with this on there so keep that in mind for your own bike if you if you use that on yours so yeah um, who is this bag for let's go ahead and close out there's not much to say about it other than it uh, attaches to the top tube on top or on the bottom and it's very lightweight and can only hold a certain amount of things so let's talk about who it's for I would say for Anybody doing longer rides in um, isolated areas where you might not have a lot of people riding around and you want to take all your emergency stuff, uh, definitely have the tools and the hardware, but also have like a tire and a CO2 cartridge, then this is going to be perfect for that. You could also bring your phone or GPS if you want to slot that in there. and have you know a safe way to contact somebody if anything happens I think that that is one of the most important things and it's overlooked on the trail um, especially for people who are more advanced in riding I know a lot of people who just take their bike and go without anything and that's cool but if something happens and you might be out there alone for an hour and you have a broken femur or something that's that's enough to kill you so Anyways, I don't really want to go down that road, but this is perfect for somebody who wants a lightweight bag and wants it to be minimal. So I'm somebody who really idolizes style and I take that into consideration in my own riding a lot and I'm really a bad critic on myself, but I like to have things look good and this looks really good on my bike, I think. And if you have a stump jumper or some something similar that has a top tube with a narrow uh, cavity in between the top tube and the down tube uh, then this will look good up in in the head head tube area where it's just kind of uh, blending into the frame lines which I think is really nice I don't really like the whole um, bag style that fits all the way in in the cavity and in, in the bike and takes up the whole space because then it kind of looks like you're on an e-bike or something and nobody really wants that let's get real here um, but anyways really good it's for people who want a lightweight bag because you're not really fitting that much stuff in there but if you don't want to carry stuff on your hips or on your back then this will bring the essentials and it's perfect for for that um, if you have any questions about it, let me know. Just pop them down in the, the comment sections. I guess you know what to do. Again, thanks everyone who's been watching and I'll see you later. Let's jump to the update and I'll tell you what I got because I got a pretty cool surprise. So if you haven't noticed, this is a little bit different of a setup and I'm actually on, on my knees. It's really uncomfortable, but just because there's so much stuff in here, I, it's crazy, but I have the, the giant project's going together probably today or tomorrow. It's the weekend right now. And then one of the coolest things that I've gotten recently is this Diamondback Release 3. And I purchased it from a gentleman out in Orlando who was selling it for a heck of a deal. And I appreciate other fellow riders who who sell things for a deal because it's hard to find in, in this, especially this climate. I mean, there's a bike shortage apparently, but the Diamondback Release 3 is the newest piece to the, the puzzle and I have way more bike builds on the way, but I'm definitely gonna jump into that one really quick because it's just such a good uh, option and such a good 
um, opportunity really. That's pretty much it. I have a lot of other stuff, but again, I can't do a whole video at the end of my video on this stuff, but thanks for everyone who's been watching. And the last thing I want to talk about, um, in, in recent days, my subscribers have been going up and I've been seeing a lot more people at the trail who recognize me. And if you recognize me from the channel, um, let me know. Uh, it's always good to hear about it and it's it's easier for me to hear that than just saying, hey, what's up, man, and not really acknowledging that you've seen my videos. I really appreciate anybody who watches them and I put a lot of time into them. If any of you have been uh, trying to start a channel in the, the quarantine, you might understand the, the amount of work that goes into these things. And anyways, if you see me out of the trail, uh, don't forget to say what's up and let me know how you how you uh, came across my videos and I'll definitely have a conversation with you. Don't forget to go out there and uh, create your own adventure however you can. Spread some positivity. I'll see you on the next one. I gotta get up. Mahalo.